We are headed towards Ticino's. This is our first time visiting the Italian speaking part of Switzerland. Uh, we plan to go on the Chestnut Trail, uh, which is basically a forest filled with a lot of chestnut trees. Uh, since it's autumn now, I think it's the right time for us to visit there. So let's see what it is like. just for ourselves so and every seat here comes with if you can see the charging points so like every two seats have two charging points each you have your own mini table a beautiful window for like a panoramic view and also like a small dustbin where you can throw your trash It's not just about the incredible precision or efficiency of the Swiss railways, but everything that adds to the experience like super clean trains, large clean windows designed to take in incredible views, and just that the train journey itself is so very, very comfortable. <music> from where there is a short bus ride to the destination where we would start our hike. Not really the destination, but to the place where we would start our hike. finding this throughout our way. Uh, in this part of the country it is called uh, Sentiro del Castagno in Italian which essentially means the chestnut trail I think. So it is a 15 kilometer circular route. So we start from the village of Arosio so we would be going to Breno and back. <music> Chestnut 
much shells on the way. So here's us picking our first chestnut. super pricky and you have to be extra careful while handling them i guess we've been doing this the wrong way and later on in the trip we realized how to take the chestnuts off the shell without hurting our fingers <music> is my second favorite season to hike after spring. If you are in Ticino and looking for an interesting hike to spend an autumn day, Sentiero del Castagno should be the one. This thematic path crosses five villages in the Alto Malcantone region, passing through woodlands with chestnut trees, birches and open fields. It is an uphill hike immersed in a natural amphitheatre created by the surrounding Gradicioli Peak. We walked through the chestnut forest for almost 30 minutes now and looks like there are not too many people here. So we did cross a couple of families but I don't know, we don't see them anymore. So we just hiking through the chestnut forest all by ourselves. It's beautiful, it's colorful, but it just feels like a bit weird because it's just us. We know we are not so lost because of these boats. kilometers into our hike uh, we've already found quite a lot of chestnuts as you can see all of these are chestnut shells here I think picked by hikers like us who went ahead of us so all of these just shells we were not lucky to find too many chestnuts here but we did pick quite a lot in our way
were a staple part of the Ticino diet in olden days. The flour made from chestnut was in fact much cheaper than wheat flour and whole chestnuts were served with vegetables, rice and meat. In fact, chestnuts were found in soups, deserts and pretty much everything. Since chestnuts could easily be damaged by moulds, specific methods were needed to preserve the chestnuts for an extended period of time. One of the most common conservation methods in Ticino was to dry the chestnuts over a lattice. In fact, even till date, the canton of Ticino is dotted with tiny stone structures used to dry chestnuts and these structures are called gra. In fact, the whole process of loading the gra and unloading the gra holds very significant cultural and historic importance in Ticino. This time around, we did not get an opportunity to visit Agra, where the chestnuts are roasted, stored and processed so they could be consumed throughout the year. However, one of the Gra that is still very operational is in the town of Mogegno. Mm -hmm.